And then a lot of these games are like Metacritic 65 and don't even make any money <laughs> when the reason you shipped them out the door was ostensibly to make money. When they went to speak at GDC, that company doesn't exist anymore. All right. <laughs> So back when we used to go to GDC, one thing you will learn from the wise people at GDC Lecturing Incorporated mm -hmm. is that you have to scope your game, all right? What you will learn from these people is that whatever brilliant, amazing ideas you have for a game at the outset, they will tell you over and over that you can't do all those things mm -hmm. and that two thirds of the way through development, you'll find that you have to dump half your game on the floor and then stitch the rest of it together and mm -hmm. rescue that and somehow ship that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then a lot of these games are like Metacritic 65 and don't even make any money <laughs> when the reason you ship them out the door was ostensibly to make money. And then a lot of these people, uh, the company name on their badge, when they went to speak at GDC, that company doesn't exist anymore, all right? <laughs> Okay. So like, yep. I'm just saying, question the advice a little bit, right? And so uh, since I started my new way of game design, right, which fortunately we're still able to do because people bought The Witness, right? I have never scoped a game where I'm making air quotes with my finger. Scoping a game means to cut it down from what you wanted to make to what you actually can make. Uh, both Braid and The Witness went the other way. They both got bigger. Um, Braid certainly, um, maybe not in terms of number of levels, like I didn't know how big it was going to be in terms of levels, but in terms of like feature set and, you know, how much time we spent making it look nice and all that, we did way more, right? And then um, with The Witness, it's just a massively bigger game. Like we thought it would be at most, um, you know, I figured it might be a 20 hour game because Braid was like a five hour game and making a game four times as big would, would be huge. But it's like, if you play everything in The Witness, it's easily a hundred hour game unless you're like really fast at puzzles. Um, it's just huge. So the way I like to see it is, look, if you're gonna put a lot of effort into something anyway, like it takes, it's not easy to make games, right? Even now with Unity Game Engine where you press the make game button, if you do that, you just have the same thing everybody else has when they press the make game button, which isn't very good, right? Mm -hmm. So it's hard It's hard to get to a point where you're even able to release something that's notable in any way, right? Mm -hmm. It takes you a decent amount of time and effort to get there. So why would you then waste the opportunity that you spent getting there by just like firing it off a little too early and having it not be that good? Right. Because then it'll take you, I don't know, did it take you two years to get to that point? It's going to take you another two years before you can get to that point again and have another attempt at maybe being able to make something good. And so if your response every time is, I got to scope this because it's been two years or whatever, then, uh, well, I, I mean, you, you, the strategy you are undergoing has an obvious result. Right. And, and we just see that over people's careers in the games industry. And like nobody stops to question that. Uh, that said, I am notorious for taking a long time uh, doing game projects. And you don't have to take as long as we do, especially if you don't insist on building your own engine all the time. And all these things, although it does help with quality if you build your own engine. So like these are all decisions that you can make. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've answered that question to a reasonable degree mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, so next question is sort well, of a, oh, sorry. Do you have anything to say about that? About the whole I, scoping thing? And cause I know you're, you're working on your own thing that you've been working on for a long time. And I don't think you feel like scoping it. Right. Or, so I guess what I would say is that I have mixed feelings about this. Um, here are my feelings about it. So I think scoping your life slash company is incredibly important and scoping your game is completely unimportant is I guess the way I would say it. Because when I try to assess like what makes things I'm working on late, 
it's almost always that like I had too many other things to do. Does that make sense? Are you saying that work life balance causes you to not get work done? Um, or no, more like work work balance, work, right? Work balance. So like, yeah. you know, it's really hard to do like handmade hero for example. Um and also work on a hard technical problem because oftentimes like you need to be able to go for like a month of time where your brain is literally focused just on this one thing. Right. I agree. And I, I actually don't get to do that at all these days it, because I'm doing a compiler and exactly a engine and a game and it does affect the quality of work. Like no question. Yes. And I think the problem is that so, okay. So one thing I will say, like, from what you just talked about is I would say, but you do kind of scope your game a little bit, right, John? Because you didn't pick the hardest possible technical game to do along with your compiler, right? And that was a smart decision because you well, could have picked a more technically ambitious game, right? You easily could have if you'd wanted to. We could easily come up with games that would have been worse than this one. Now, yes. granted, as you normally do, you always go like, let me push what I can do to, in this game to the limit. <clears throat> yeah. But you didn't go, let me also make the massively multiplayer online first person infinite view distance, you know, uh, yeah. thousand people per server game, right? Which you could have done if you weren't trying to say, let me pick the easiest to scope of my ideas to go with my compiler. Yes. Well, that, so that, that was a smart um, decision, right? I, I would like to use a different verb for that because I, I think of okay. those as relatively orthogonal things. Okay. Like, yeah, you absolutely should be smart at the outset about what you're deciding to build. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the, the canonical newbie mistake is like kid gets out of school and wants to get in video games and wants to make the, the super MMO sports uh, spaceship game or what, you know, just like put everything in there. And it's like, well, actually it's, it's very difficult to do what you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is universal, right? It's very hard to make games and you need to respect that going in. Um, even going back to braid though, when I did braid, it was like, look, I have this history of not finishing projects. How do I help ensure that I finish this one? I'm going to do a 2d game because yep. I don't want to deal with 3d. Right. Yep. That was like a foundational decision. And it paid off, right? Like, yep. that's just what that was. Um, so that is true. That is different, however, than like giving up on your dreams in the middle of development. Yep. Sort of. I mean, I, you could have a hybrid of those things where it's like, I guess I'm learning now what is practically able to be accomplished. And when I made this decision early on, I didn't really know. But the people who lecture for GDC Lecturing Incorporated LLC don't really have that excuse because they've made like four games before or whatever. They should know. And they still say, well, you have to scope your game every time. And I'm like, no, just make a better, make a better decision about what you're going to build or work in a situation where you're not as budget constrained. Right. Which also yeah. has implications on what you can build. Right. Like I cannot build a, Assassin's Creed Ragnarok or whatever. Cause like, I just don't have that kind of money. Right. Yeah. I could build an indie version of an Assassin's Creed game with that kind of gameplay, but like, I just can't build those huge maps full of, yeah. you know, historically accurate things. Yeah. But because I don't try to do that, we have money to pay people to stay employed for extra years beyond, you know, what we originally would have scheduled or whatever, which is why we don't have to like scope the game in the GDC lecture sense. All right. Yeah.